Hello everyone. So it's Wednesday the 13th of January and this is your next maths virtual lesson. Moving on with our percentage knowledge. Now just like yesterday, we've got your starter here. There are three questions which will involve a lot of different areas of maths that we've looked at. What I'd like you to do is on a scrap bit of paper or in your home learning book or a whiteboard if you're lucky enough to have one, have a go at solving these three. So pause the video, have a go at solving them and come back and we'll talk through the answers. So if you pause it now and have a go for me. Okay, so we should be back now and we can talk through the answers to these. Some of them took, especially three, took a little bit of thinking about. So number one, which of these numbers round to 2,000 to the nearest 100? So we know to round up it's five or above and to round down it's four or below so let's have a look we want to round to 2000 to the nearest hundred so we are looking at the hundreds column and to do that we need to look look at the hundreds column which is a nine but to know what to round we look at the column below or one column to the right which in this case is a five five rounds up which will change this nine into a ten we can't have 10 in one column, a one place value column. So the zero would go there and the one would be added to the next column, our thousands, which would make it a two. And then everything below your hundreds column will become zero, so that'll be 2000. So this one very much was. This one here, we have a three in our hundreds column. We look at the next column across to know whether to round up or down. That is a one. So we would keep the three as is, and these two would become zeros here, so it wouldn't round to 2,000. This one here, we've got a zero, but the nine rounds up, but this would only change back to a one. And so it'd be 2,100, it would not round to 2,000. This one here, if we have a look, that's a zero, but this is a four, which means we round down, which means the zero stays as it is, but the four and five become zeros, making this 2,000. So the two, that rounded to 2,000 nearest 100 were 1,950 and 2,045. Question number two, what are the missing numbers? So 6.4 equals one, add something. So you could have just done this in your head. You could have taken the one away from 6.4 and what you're left with is gonna be the missing box. But whatever way you did it, it's 5.4. So one add 5.4 is 6.4. Then we have three and two fifths equals one, add something. Now it didn't give you the option for a mixed number here, so it was wanting the improper fraction. Okay, so you, again, what I would do is I'd take the one off the whole number, so you'd have two and two fifths, and then you work out, so two holes in terms of fifths would be 10 fifths, and then you add the two that's on top for 12 fifths. Question three. Annie has a one meter piece of wire. She cuts the wire into two pieces. She uses a smaller piece to make this rectangle. So the smaller piece of wire to make this rectangle. 14 by four. Okay. So we've got to work out the whole perimeter of it, how much wire we'll need. We need two lots of 14, two lots of four, or we can do 14 out of four and times it by two, whatever you want to do, but it's 36. So we'd use 36 centimeters of the wire. She uses the other piece of the wire to make a square. What is the length of one side of the square? Now we know all the sides of the square are going to be equal. We know we've used 36 centimeters of that wire already. And we know we had a meter of wire to begin with. A meter of wire in centimeters, because we want to make it all the same unit, would be 100. And then we want to take away what we've used already so we know what we've got left to make this square. So for 100 centimetres for the whole piece of wire, take away the 36 we've used to make the rectangle, leaves us with 64. We've got 64 centimetres there. Now we need to go to our shape knowledge. Every side's the same, so we're going to share them out equally, the wire on each side, and we know that a square has four sides. So 64 divided by 4 leaves us with 16, meaning every side of the square will be 16 centimetres. This is incredibly wrong. So once the whole square has a perimeter of 64 centimetres, but this is your answer here, one side of the square would be 16 centimetres.
Well done. That was some tricky starter questions. Took some thinking about. So let's move on to the main bulk of learning now. So the learning intention is to convert between fractions, decimals, and percentages. So we're looking to use all three of fractions, decimals, and percentages today, not just the ones we've been looking at, fractions and percentages. Start word today, fraction, percentage, convert, equivalent, denominator. All the same ones we've been using. Could throw decimals in there, but exactly the same as we've been using. So let's look at the method we're going to use today. So if we've got a percentage, 25%, and we know we can use that to make a fraction, putting it over 100. We know we could simplify that fraction, but we're going to keep it as that 100 because it's going to help us make the decimal. Now, this also means that this fraction also means 25 divided by 100, because as we learn in term two, that line, which we could not discover the name of, I remember we looked for ages, that really means divide. OK, that line really means divide. 25 divided by about 100 and we can use that to help us find our decimal so here's the percentage 25 percent here's the fraction 25 over 100 this here 25 divided by 100 helps us to find the decimal now when we divide by 100 we know we're going to do that decimal point jumping method so we remember when we jump the decimal point because of how many zeros so 100 has two zeros so we know we're going to have two jumps and we're dividing so when we divide, we jump to the right. So even though 25 doesn't have a decimal point, remember, it's going to have that imaginary one after it, because then we'd have loads of zeros in the decimal places. So that imaginary decimal point is there, and we're going to make two jumps to the right. So one jump would put it between here and give us 2.5. The second jump puts it here and gives us 0.25. Now hopefully, looking at this, you think that looks a bit wrong. Because remember, we can't have a blank space in front of that decimal point. So we need to put a place holding zero in. There's nothing there in this spot here in front of the decimal point. We have to put a zero there. So therefore, 25% is 25 or 100, and that's going to be 0 0.25. A lot of the ones today are going to be 0 point something. OK, so really think, is there something in front of that decimal point? But there are the equivalent decimals. As easy as that. You change your percentage to a fraction over 100, and then you use that to find the decimal by doing your two jumps. We can don't have to start percentage. We can start the fraction and get the percentage because we know this fraction would be 25%. We can get it in lots of different ways. We don't always have to start the percentage. Learning's a bit different today. But what I'd like you to do, you will still be doing. And a bit of my athletics later on but what i'd like you to do now is in your home learning books i would like you to almost draw this table out now i'm not there to make sure you use a ruler as i normally do but i'd like you to use a ruler to make it neat if you can and you've got this table that's partially filled out so you can see you've got one tenth in the fraction block here or 0.2 in the decimal block here or 25 percent here i would like you to use what we've just done so you could always go back in the video and just watch what we did again I would like you to fill that table in. Now I've put up here, some of it is targeting greater depth knowledge. So do not panic if you get to some parts of this table and you think I have not a clue how to do this part. That's okay. That's why I've put complete as much of the table below as you can. All I want you to think of is how we might convert percentages to decimals to fractions. I would suggest the method we just did, I'm just going to flip back to it quickly, we started with the percentage. So the easiest one to do, we start with these percentages here and change them to a fraction over 100 and then change them to a decimal. Your challenge though, when we change these fractions, is to show them in their simplest forms. Okay, so we could write 25 over 100 and that would help us find our decimal, but 25 over 100 25s go into 100 four times, okay, so it would be one quarter. To try and simplify them as well if you can, this will take the bulk of your time today. It will probably take you a good 15, 20 minutes to get it all done. Just get as much of it as you can done. So you're going to pause, have a go at doing this in your home learning book, draw the table out, and then come back, unpause, and we'll get on with the rest of the learning for today.
So pause it now and have a go. Right, so here are your answers. Now all of these are shown in simplified form. If you've got, for example, 25 over 100, you can have it, that's okay. So if you've got th uh, 30 over 100, that, that again is okay. 40 over 100, if you've got them over 100, that's fine. There's your decimal answers. If you put the zero afterwards, so 0 0.30, that is fine. You still get the mark and percentages are there. So have a look at this table. I'll leave it up for, well, I'll tell you what, you can pause it to do your answers. So we're not all waiting. So you can pause it to do your answers. Have a pause and then unpause when you're done and we'll carry on. Right. So hopefully you've marked your answers. If you got all of them right, amazing. Absolutely amazing. If you've got some of them right, good job. If you've got very few of them right, that's okay. It was a tricky task, but I wanted to stretch you and see what we could do today. Now, for today, I would like you to go on Mathletics, and I would like you to give the task that you've been set a go. Okay, so you've been set a task, go and give it a go. After you've completed that task, come back, and we'll move on to a problem solving and reason plen plenary question. Okay, so pause it, do your Mathletics, then come back. Perfect. What I'd like you to do now is to fill in the missing numbers in this problem. So we're given some of the information, but not all of the information. OK, so we're given 60 percent. This is probably the most useful part, because from that 60 percent, we can find the decimal, which goes in here. And then the decimal, which goes in here, or using percentage, we can find the fraction. Now, notice there is it's given in fifths. Normally, our method would be to put this over 100. You can still do that, but don't forget to simplify it to get what goes in here. So have a go in your home learning book. Give it a go, pause it, have a go, then come back and we'll talk through the answers. Perfect. Right, let's go through the answers for today. So there are your answers, and I'll talk through how we got them. So we know that the fraction is going to be 60 over 100. As we know, that's what 60% that was given to us. That's how we show it. We then, for the fraction, need to simplify it. So the largest number that goes into both, we could have 2, 5, 10, but the largest number that goes into both is 20. Now, 20 goes into 60 three times. 20 goes into 100 five times. So your fraction in fifths, because it gives us fifths here, your fraction in fifths is three fifths. To find the decimal, we use the 60 over 100, and the decimal equivalent, we do the two jumps, we put the 60 there, remember the decimal point's going to go there, two jumps, and then put the zero in front as a placeholder, so 0 0.60, or 0 0.6, if you don't want to put the zero. So that's it for today. What I'd like you to do is finish the video, close it down, and then you can go on to TT Rockstars and do your 10 or 15 minutes of TT Rockstars time. Well done, and I will see you tomorrow.